Design is all about exploration. Try a new color, try a new font. Exploration is essential for creative professionals and within exploration lies iteration. Blend modes are an extremely fun and useful way of exploring this vast space. Find the appropriate blending mode for it and let yourself submerge into the new space of gorgeous colors. But I've always wondered, how do these work? What does screen mean? Color burn? While I don't think we'll have an answer for the names themselves, we can definitely find out the details that make these tools so effective and useful in our everyday design tasks. Blend modes operate on layers. Layers define different levels that conform our work, stacking on top of each other. They have a specific order which we give them. This paradigm allows the user to create a sense of depth and occlusion, as if one layer was on top of another. This concept, while obvious to some, is key in order to understand blend modes. When we tell the program to set this layer's blend mode to screen, we're changing how the contents of the selected layer will render with respect to everything that's under it. As such, blend modes know about the color this layer has at every point in our artboard and every color from every layer that's under it. This allows us to define a function that takes as input a background color, the colors below our layer, and a foreground, the colors in our layer, return a new value for the new color in the foreground layer, based on the original value in it and whatever's behind. Most blend modes operate on each of the color channels independently. These are the red, green, and blue levels that every pixel in our artboard has. So the main job our blend mode has to do is to fiddle around with the color values in the affected layers in order to output a new set of values. These operations usually just involve basic math, which I find fascinating. Let's start with lighten and darken, also known as lighter color and darker color. These two modes are based on a simple rule. If the background layer is greater or less than the foreground layer, just keep what the name says. Lighten just keeps the lighter of the two, darken keeps the darkest of the two. It's really that simple. You can see how the background is also being considered. Also, as a small side note, when talking about color values, we'll operate on the 0 to 1 range here, where 0 means black and 1 means white. Usually, we represent colors in the range from 0 to 255 or even hexadecimal, but this way of doing it will make it easier to calculate the new values. All in all, after calculating, we can always go back to whatever color space we want. Blend modes usually come in complementary pairs. Lighten works exactly the opposite as darken, so does multiply with respect to screen. Multiply does, again, not lie to us. It returns the product of the two values. Because this operation is done in a 0 to 1 range, the result is always going to be closer to 0, or darker. Now, screen gets a little fancy. One would expect that, if it's complementary to multiply, it would, like, divide the values? But that wouldn't work as expected. The screen effect inverts the original values, that is, we subtract 1 to them, multiplies these values together, and then inverts this whole thing again. As such, their new values will always be lighter. As you can see, the added complexity for the screen mode just boils down to chaining operations one after the other in order to guide the effect into the right direction. This is the case with the rest of blending modes, which involve a larger number of operations. At least the operations themselves are just basic math. As opposed to the modes we just saw, which darken or brighten the whole image, these modes affect the image by boosting the contrast in some way or another. That is, they'll brighten or darken the sections of the layers depending on the original values of the image. Overlay applies a multiply or a screen effect depending on the background color value. If the background value is less than 0.5, it will multiply it with the foreground, otherwise it will screen it. As you can see, if the background is somewhat dark to start with, overlay will use multiply which accentuates this. Similarly, if the background was rather light, screen will make it even lighter. Hard light does exactly the same operation as overlay, but it instead checks for the foreground value. If the foreground value is less than 0.5, multiply it, otherwise screen it. Okay, we get it. 
I could go on forever with every blending mode in existence, but that wouldn't be very useful. It is nevertheless interesting to know how these basic blend modes work since most of the rest are based on the previously mentioned ones. But now we have a very clear idea of what a blending mode is. A bunch of simple operations on the colors of the relevant pixels. That means that we could theoretically make our very own blending mode, right? Right! So that's why I made this tiny website to prove that concept. The webpage simulates a field rectangle positioned on top of the image. The color field for that rectangle is selected via this color picker right here. We can select different blending modes and see how this color mode combo affects the original image. But the interesting part is the custom option. We are now given a little box to write on, a bunch of operators and some suggestions. By default we are presented with the divide operator, which divides the background by the foreground. We can immediately see how this is not related with the multiplayer effect at all. We can edit this to make it our own. For example, we can subtract 0.3 to the whole result, or multiply the foreground by some amount and then divide the background by all that. We can also add the six basic colors to the mix, like red, green, blue, magenta, cyan, and yellow, by simply naming them. And we can also select one of the suggested formulas and see what happens. By playing around with these values, foreground and background, adding a touch of color, having fun, we can see the effect taking place. And even though we can see how easy and fun it is to chain operations and experiment, we can also take a moment to appreciate how hard it is to create something rather useful. Most of the time I found myself in a completely cursed version of the pirates. I mean, if that's what you're going for. But this should give a sense as to why the blending modes we use every day are built that way. There's lots of thought put into those and I can now much better appreciate them. Next time you use overlay, remember that blending modes are simply the basic math we made along the way. <laughs>